Welcome to Electra Online. Jupiter is actually a failed star. And what do we mean by that? Because Jupiter is a planet, how could Jupiter be a star? But then if we watch the previous video, we realize that the composition of Jupiter is very similar to that of the Sun, almost exactly the same. So what is the difference? The difference simply is size. If Jupiter had been bigger, it would have become a star. And now we realize that the majority of the solar systems out there, well, they consist of more than one star. Two stars or three stars is very, very common. More common than a single star. So, what would have happened if Jupiter was bigger? Well, then Jupiter would have become a star, and then this solar system would have two stars in it. And then probably the Earth may not have had life on it because that would have created kind of a strange circumstance where the orbit of the Earth may have been such that the variation in temperature would have been too large for life to exist. Who knows? But anyway, let's take a closer look. How does a star become a star? Well, it, it, it grows out of a big nebula. Uh, because of the gravitational interaction and some other events, once the masses of gas and dust begin to collapse gravitationally, there really is no stopping to it. And that will continue over the millions of years and eventually form a big, what we call, protostar. Our sun at some point was probably a hundred times the radius that is currently because it was this big ball of gas that then slowly compressed. Gravity will then continue to compress, reaching higher and higher pressure and higher and higher temperatures inside the forming star, and higher and higher temperatures would then generate a more radiation coming from that protostar. So the protostar would become smaller due to gravity and become hotter because of the compression. Eventually, when the temperature at the core reaches 10 million degrees Kelvin, which is over 20 million degrees, well, not quite over 20, a little bit less than 20 million degrees Fahrenheit, if you wanted um, to think about it in terms of Fahrenheit degrees. Well, when it reaches that temperature, nuclear fusion will start, and the nuclear fusion will generate so much energy that the pressure of the generated energy will halt the compression of the star, and the star will kind of balance out a particular star, depending upon the temperature at the core, and then it will just shine for billions and billions of years, just like our sun does. So what happened to Jupiter? Well, Jupiter did the same thing when Jupiter was first formed. It was much larger in size, same amount of mass, but larger in size. And gravitational pressure just kept on pushing and pushing, making the planet smaller and smaller, increasing the temperature at the core. But Jupiter was just too small to generate the kind of pressure necessary to produce the temperature necessary for nuclear fusion. At this time, we estimate that the temperature at the core of Jupiter is only about 20,000 Kelvin. That's still very hot, much hotter than the core of the Earth, but not nearly enough to start nuclear fusion. So the process of gravitational collapse on Jupiter is still going on. We estimate that every year the radius of Jupiter decreases by about a millimeter. That's a very tiny amount, but it's still a process, and that process generates heat, and that's why more heat escapes the planet, because that's one of the sources of the heat produced in the planet. The other source may be the slow uh, dropping of the helium, since it's heavier than hydrogen, through the planet, generating the friction and the heat there as well. But the gravitational collapse is definitely probably the primary uh, way in which heat is generated and that is still ongoing and nothing to stop it because yeah the pressure just keeps on building as the gravity just keeps on pushing making the planet smaller. So how big would Jupiter have to be for it to have become a star? Well we know the mass of Jupiter and I guess I'm missing an R here so let's add the R is about 0.1% the mass of the Sun. The minimum mass needed for a star to become a star, for enough mass to be present to generate the pressure and therefore the temperature needed, 10 million Kelvin, to start nuclear fusion, well, that has to be about 8% the mass of the Sun. Are there stars that are that small? Well, there's plenty of stars that size. As a matter of fact, stars that size aren't really that much bigger than Jupiter. They just have more mass packed into a smaller volume, and so they're very dense and very hot at the center. So, 8% compared to 0.1%, that's 80. With other words, 
if Jupiter had been 80 times as massive, it had collected 18 times, 80 times the mass that it currently has, it would have become a star. It just failed at becoming one. It just couldn't grab enough matter in our solar system as it was forming. The sun probably got the vast majority of it, and Jupiter could not grow to the size it needed to be in order to become a star as it has done in billions and billions of other solar systems throughout our galaxy alone. So that's why we can call Jupiter a failed star. Does most solar systems have two stars? This uh, what? Does most solar systems? Yes, most solar systems have two or more stars. Binary star systems are very common. There's plenty that have three or four. Yeah, definitely. It's common. So how do the planets? Well, in those cases, the planets may have very strange orbits if they're being pulled in different directions by the different stars as the stars revolve one another. It has a lot to do with where the stars are located and where the planets are located. If both stars are relative close to each other and the planets are outside of it, then you have a near normal situation. But if the stars are mixed in, if the second star, if the second star is far beyond the initial orbits of the f initial planets, yeah, that could be quite interesting for the orbits of those planets. Yeah. And by the way, I had mentioned it, here's a picture where we have a projection of, uh, of the sun and then you have the four gas planets you, of course, cannot see the four terrestrial planets, which are tiny little dots compared to the size of the sun. But here's the relative size between Jupiter and the sun. The sun just simply is much, much bigger than Jupiter, although made out of the same material. And here's another beautiful picture of the planet, a close-up picture that shows the vivid detail of the beautiful bands, zones, and belts that go around the planet. Beautiful planet, but it's not a star. <laughs>